You should have been given a vial of oil as you came in the sanctuary this morning. If you don't have one, uh, raise your hand real quick and Jesse will toss one to you or come and bring it to you. Okay, everyone has it. You're going to need this during the sermon. Jesse did his job right. You get credit for today. Story goes that a hen and a hog were walking down a street one day and they crossed by a church. And the sign in front of the church said, let's help the poor, let's feed the poor. And the uh, hen looked at the hog and said, I know what we can do, we can give them ham and eggs for breakfast. The hog looked at the hen and said, that's easy for you to say, for you it's a contribution. For me, it's total commitment. Think about that for a minute, folks. Just let that sink in. By the way, we had pulled pork for dinner last night. Uh, That's what God wants from us. Total commitment. Total commitment to his ways. Total commitment to his lifestyle. Nothing scary. Not necessarily going off to... Ten buck two to be a missionary, but total commitment to his ways every day. Now follow this thought with me for a moment this morning. Exodus 40 verse 9 says, Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. It will be holy. We did that here a few years ago uh, when Matt Ellis was with us. Uh, Matt had mentioned that one night he was here in the church late by himself, and it was as though there was some evil spirit here. And he, he, he said he actually felt scared that night. I think he was cleaning up after a wedding, if I remember correctly. Um, as the next week or so went, there were two or three times when I was here in the building by myself during the day. Now, there's always weird noises when you're in a building by yourself. I've learned that about half of them are the trucking company next door to us and things going on over there. But this particular day, uh, over several days, it was just different. There was something here that made me not want to be in this building by myself. Matt and I got to praying about it and I said, let's go around and anoint the building. We went around and anointed various rooms. We, we, we took the anointing oil and went around the doors. We, we went around the whole altar area and, and made this very sacred place for God. We went to different places in the building where, where we just felt uneasy and we anointed those areas in particular. We took a, a Bible uh, in those different areas and, and we opened the Bible to some very specific verses. Now keep in mind that this was a time of the year when, when during the week the heat and the air wouldn't be going on because the temperatures were kind of like they are outside right now and, and everything was just perfectly still in the building. And come back the next day and pages in the Bibles were turned. We knew there was something here that needed to be driven out of this building. And so we anointed the building again and again. And after the third time, pages in the Bible did not turn. They stayed where we had left them. Anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it and all its furnishings, and it will be holy. Now take that one step further with me this morning and um, make it personal. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says, Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are not your own. Therefore, honor God with your body. I don't know about you, but I just simply want to be Christ-like. I want to be Christ-like in everything that I do, every attitude that I have, everything that is a part of me. I want to know what would Jesus do. John 3.34 says to us, God gives the Spirit without limit. Think about that. God's Holy Spirit on our life without limit. What I want to share to you this morning 
came about from a, uh, a text message I received a week ago uh, last night. It was from uh, Dr. McCain, our district superintendent. He, uh, he sent me a note. And he just said, uh, just want you to know, I've been praying for you. I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm glad you're back in the pulpit. I'm glad that uh, things are going well with you. And uh, there's something that I want to share with you that has helped me many times in my life that has to do with anointing. And he said, uh, just read this over, see what you think. And so this morning, I use this uh, as portions of this message, with his permission, by the way, and uh, with his blessings. Uh, you have oil this morning. Uh, those of you who are out at the uh, senior home should have oil as well. Those of you who are at home listening to the service may want to run and grab the uh, olive oil uh, that you may have there in your home. And uh, if you have some grape juice and uh, some crackers, you may want to get those as well so that you can join us in communion at the end of the service. And uh, those out of the uh, senior home will be supplied with those uh, things this morning as well. Um, this morning, as I, as I think about anointing, as I think about what's going on in our lives, I, I ask you to join me in the symbolism of the day and just simply pray that God will transform your life. Psalms 23, 5 says, Anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. This morning as I got up early, I, I looked up some things on that verse, anoint my head with oil. Anointing oil has long been used uh, for healing purposes. We use it, we use it in church uh, when we're having a healing service. We anoint somebody in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, believing that they're going to be healed uh, of whatever it is in their lives that need to be healed of. Many of you have partaken of the anointing oil and the healing. I have been anointed here. And we can tell you that God touches your life, physically heals you of whatever's going on that, uh, uh, at times that, that will just get you up and going again because God touched you. But this morning, as I think about this thing of anointing my head with oil, 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, we have the mind of Christ. Think about that for a second. We have the mind of Christ. I desire my thought life to be centered on Jesus Christ. Not on impure thoughts, not on lustful thoughts, not on negative thoughts, not on critical thoughts. Every person here knows how easy it is to get negative thoughts or critical thoughts going in your life. We need to start thinking, what would Jesus do? We need to allow Jesus to come down and so totally transform our minds that we're centered on him. And the critical becomes way off over here where we don't even think about it. And the negative gets pushed way over here to where where we don't think about it, but we think about Jesus Christ. Take the oil this morning. Anoint your head. Trusting that God, praying that God will keep your thoughts where they need to be centered on him. I think this morning of my eyes. My eyes see everything. They take in everything. The other day, uh, we had Cameron with us, and uh, Marcy had gone into Walmart, and I said, call me when you're done with most of the shopping and you're heading down to, to get a, a wedding card for the wedding gift, and uh, I've got to get some things in the uh, pharmacy area there, and, and uh, Cameron and I will come in at that point. Well, she called me and said, I'm on my way down to the cards. Okay, so Cameron and I got out of the car, and we walked into Walmart, there at the pharmacy end, and as we walked in, he ran away from me. Now, I don't have the energy to chase a four-year-old right now, and so I'm, Cameron, get back here. No, Grandpa, no, I gotta look at this. And he went right straight ahead in the center aisle there where were some big Mickey Mouse uh, heads for costumes. And he grabbed one and had to put it on. And I said, can you see? I can see you, Grandpa, I can see you. And I thought, uh, Kid spots everything. He'll even spot a little tiny Mickey Mouse in a store and go running after it. 
Our eyes see everything. The other thought I have is that our eyes see exactly what we want to see sometimes. We can look at the good, we can look at the bad. I want to sharpen my spiritual vision. I want to understand more of the Trinity and the place of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in my life. I want to be able to look at others with love and with mercy, not with envy, not with judgment, not with criticism. And so this morning, I anoint my eyes, asking God to let my eyes see what I need to see, to put blinders on when I need the blinders so I don't see the things of this world that could adversely affect me. I, I think of my ears. My ears at times seem to be very sensitive. If the TV gets too loud, I start getting a headache. If, if the Yogi Bear and the playing in the van on the video in the van for the kids gets too loud, I just start going crazy because it's just hurting my ears. If last night at the wedding reception, I, I kept walking away from these speakers. They were playing loud music, and, and I thought, oh, man, that's killing my ears, and I... I finally heard somebody younger who was related to me say, say, boy, that music's too loud. I got to get away from it. So Nate and I walked away from that music to continue our conversation. Our ears get sensitive. I want my ears to be sensitive to what God is saying to me. That means that at times I need to put the phone down. It means that at times that I, I need to turn something off. That means that at times I need to block everything else out and say, Lord, what do you want me to hear? John 10, 27 talks about the God's, the, the Jesus being our shepherd and the sheep know his voice and respond to it. I want to hear God's voice. I don't want to hear negative things. I don't want to hear lying or discouraging thoughts. I don't want to hear gossip. I want to hear God's words of encouragement. And so this morning... I anoint my ears, asking God to touch my ears, to keep them tuned in to him. Think of my nose. Uh, some of you will remember the old gospel crusaders when we were in college. A lot of us were there at the same time. Gospel Crusaders went out and held uh, church services on weekends. Uh, I was on a team that uh, traveled together for a couple of years. We got to know each other real well. We went to uh, Burn, Indiana one weekend. It was the home of one of the girls on our team. And uh, her parents kept everybody at their house. It was a big, big parsonage. And we were sitting in the living room that evening talking after we had arrived there. And, and after almost a year and a half of traveling together, some of us had never realized or known because we had never been in a relaxing situation like that together. And we're sitting there and we start kicking our shoes off and, and this one girl kicked her shoes off and all of a sudden, wow. I mean, it's like, oh. And, and she could see us starting to sniff and she went, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think about the foot problem I have. This girl had the stinkiest feet. It was awful. And all we could do was sit there and just laugh. It was so bad. I thought about that story down through the years and I thought about my nose. How it picks up different scents. How it knows if there's a fire in the area. How it knows if dinner's burning or or if dinner's cooking and wow, it smelled, del smelled delicious last night, didn't it? We were sitting out there uh, by this barn and then food smell just was fantastic. A scent that was pleasing, an aroma that just made us want to eat. 2 Corinthians 2.14 talks about having an aroma pleasing to Christ. I want to be able to discern what is pleasing to God, and what does not smell quite right? 
You know, there's times in our lives when there's those gray areas. There doesn't seem to be any right or wrong. And just because something feels good does not make it right. So I anoint my nose this morning that I will smell what is right and holy in God's ways. I think about my mouth, my poor mouth. There are times that my mouth gets engaged before my brain does. There are times that my mouth just shoots off and my brain hasn't woken up yet. There are times that uh, I, I, I say the wrong thing at the wrong time. I like the times when I say the right thing at the right time. But there's times when I say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Oh, I can get in so much trouble doing that. Most of us are that way. <clears throat> Ephesians 4.29 says, Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what will build others up. Ephesians 5.4 says, There to be no obscenity, no foolish talk, or coarse joking, but speak with thanksgiving. My prayer is that I will have a holy tongue, that my tongue won't be sharp, that it will speak things holy to God. And so this morning, I, I anoint my mouth, not inside my mouth, but my lips, so that I speak holy things, encouraging things, uplifting things to others. I think about my hands. They say we should wash our hands a lot every day so that we don't get germs when we scratch ourselves or eat or whatever. Keep your hands clean. Our hands reach out. They can do damage. They can smack somebody. They can punch somebody. With different gestures, we can... We can hurt somebody just by the way we talk and gesture towards them. I, I had a conversation with somebody years ago uh, over an issue, and, and, and as I was talking to them, I, I pointed to something off in the distance so they would know what I was talking about, and they later accused me of coming up and putting my finger right in their face and shaking it at them and offending them. I didn't do it. I promise. My hands can help people. They can be hands of healing. They can be hands that can reach out and, and hug somebody and give them a warm fuzzy that just makes their day and makes them feel good all over again. They can be hands that can take help to somebody who needs some kind of help, whether it be food or, or financial aid or whatever. They, they can be hands that can do those kind of things and hand something to them that's worth handing to them. I, I want my hands to be hands that will reach out to people and flow God's power through to them. And so this morning, I anoint my hands with oil. <clears throat> I anoint my feet. Our feet lead us where we need to go. If we didn't have feet, we'd be in trouble. Feet, we'll walk over there, and we walk over there. The Bible talks about our feet leading us in paths of righteousness. I want to anoint my feet that I may be led where I need to be. Now, don't take your shoes off and anoint your feet, but... but Anoint down by your feet. Asking God to lead you in those paths you need to be led in. 1 John 2.27 says, As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you. You don't need anyone to teach you. You need God's spirit to lead you. 
This morning, I pray that uh, his anointing will continue to teach us about all things. Will be an anointing that is real, that's not counterfeit. An anointing that will keep us remaining in him all the days of our life. That we will do his will and his ways. That we will be his people. Anointed. Anointed by God to do his will and his ways. You see, he's worthy. He's worthy of the life that we live in him. He's worthy of our honor and our love. Mary 